Appendix A of making a cat suit. Gloves. If you wanted gloves on your cat suit, you'll have left blobs of fabric at the end of your sleeves. This video will show you what to do with them. Start by drawing around your hand on tissue paper. Your hand should have its fingers spread wide and your forefinger should be in line with your wrist. Bluntly, I'm not a big fan of gloves. I've settled on this quick and dirty glove that I find works well enough for me without stretching my patience. If you want something better, there's a lovely complicated glove pattern on stretchy.org. Draw down along the side of your forefinger to your wrist to cut off the thumb. Now draw down the rough middle of your forefinger to your wrist. These lines should be parallel. For my hand, the middle line is 10mm away from the first line. Draw a perpendicular to the middle line from the lowest point in the thumb webbing and one at the base of the thumb where it joins the wrist. These perpendiculars should cross the middle line. Mark the midpoint. Now unlike the catsuit pattern, gloves are quite sensitive to different fabrics, so you'll need to make a test glove or two to perfect the pattern before you apply it to the fabric at the end of your sleeves. I'll describe things as if you're working with the final sleeves for the rest of the video, but you must make at least one test glove first, and I'll refer to that now and again. Here's one place you can certainly experiment. I'm going to draw a semicircle around the midpoint of the middle line, but you'll see later that it ends up looking rather large on the finished glove. Instead of drawing a circle, I could have drawn a shallower curve and copied it to the thumb piece during the later step. So try different curves in your test gloves and use one you're happy with for your sleeves. Draw a line parallel to the forefinger line, the same distance from, but on the opposite side to, the middle line, and cut the thumb off between the forefinger line and the new line, set aside for later. Now add a 5mm border to your palm outline, but not along the forefinger to the wrist. Work around, measuring and marking dots, and then join them up. At the base of the fingers, your border's perimeter will not meet your hand outline. Notice that I started drawing the border in pen. You should mark the border in pencil because this is your master pattern and you'll almost certainly have to change it once you find out how tight or loose your test glove is. Take the cut off thumb piece and copy it to a fresh sheet of paper. Mark a fold line along the back of the thumb. Now between the ends where the thumb was cut off, copy the curve you drew on the glove below the middle finger. I used a semicircle, but you might use something else. Mark notches at the ends of that curve. Now add a border around the thumb, including the curve you just added, but not along the fold line. Make a copy of the hand and thumb patterns. You'll be sewing the fabric through these, so they'll be destroyed. Make the copies in obvious pen so you can see the line clearly. Now fold the sleeve along the long seam from armpit to wrist, which should form a natural fold on the other side of the sleeve that runs evenly through the spare fabric you left at the end. Pin one of the palm pattern copies to the fabric, carefully aligning the wrist with the wrist nut you cut on the sleeve. Pin along the fold through both layers, and then pin along the forefinger midline through the top layer of fabric only, carefully making sure that you're pinning through the front of the extended sleeve, unless your thumbs are attached differently to the rest of humanities. Now pin the end of each finger and below the base of each V, avoiding the width of the border, and at the wrist. You may need to change the curve just near the wrist so it matches your sleeve. Turn your machine's foot pressure to light and use a walking or rolling foot if you have them. Use a simple stitch, not zigzag unless you want to experiment, to sew along the line, through the pattern. Lift the foot with the needle down in order to turn, being careful not to bend or tug the needle while you turn the cloth. You shouldn't be cutting the paper with your stitching. That probably means your stitches are too short or your thread tension is too tight. Remember to backstitch a few stitches at the start and end of the sewing. The fingers join at a V, but don't sew a simple V. You can see one of those on the left of this carefully screwed up bit of sewing. Instead, sew just short of the V, turn a right angle, and then work the machine by hand to throw it sew just three stitches before turning another right angle and sewing up the other finger. You can see this in the middle. When you turn the right angle, leave the needle down and let the fabric move freely. Don't let its weight pull it out of alignment or you'll end up with an ugly looking puckered mess like you see on the right. Here I'm unpinning the glove except for the mid forefinger pins through the front of the glove. I draw the lower layer of fabric to form a new fold along the middle finger line. I pinned that new fold, cut along the semicircle, 
and then cut notches at the top and bottom. You can see the unfolded cut out and the new fold still pinned along the middle finger line. Remove the middle finger pins and gently tear the tissue paper away from the sewing. You can see the cut out hole offset itself as the original fold line reasserts itself. Slide your hand into the glove, the wrong hand because the glove is inside out, and feel how tight the fingers are. If they're too loose, consider sewing a little inside the existing sewing and update the width of the border on the master pattern piece from which you're copying the temporary pieces. If they're too tight, adjust the master pattern and make another test glove. Now cut the glove out. Leave a millimetre or two on the outside of the stitching, but in the Vs between the fingers, cut as close as you like to the bottom of the V without cutting the thread. Here you can see the result of the incorrectly sewn finger bases. The V between my first two fingers doesn't look too bad, but it doesn't feel right. The one in the middle is fine, and the one between my ring and little finger looks rubbish. Now we do much the same thing with the thumb piece. Pin it along a fold and sew it. You could serge this if you really want to, but if you're using a normal sewing machine, you'll want to fold this right sides together and sew through the pattern until you reach the curve you copied from the forefinger midline, and then cut out carefully, a millimetre or two to the side of the stitching, and then around the unsewn curve. Here's the thumb sewn. You can see how the end opens out into the same sort of circle that was cut out of the palm piece. Now the trick is to sew the thumb into the hole in the palm. Slide the thumb into the glove, right sides together, and align the notches. Pin them with pins pointing in the same direction, either inside the thumb or around the outside. Now pin halfway around between the pins, and then again for a total of eight pins, and then carefully sew the edges together, going slowly to make sure both layers are fed under the foot at the same time. I wouldn't recommend a serger for this because the size of the foot makes it tricky to get the seam into place and the glove works well enough if you sew this with a non-stretched stitch while stretching the fabric a bit. So there's a glove. Here's a trick to let you take your gloves off while keeping the suit on. Cut two rectangles as wide as your wrist and a couple of inches across. Fold them wrong sides together and sew along the long edges to form two casings. Turn the sleeve inside out and cut a slit across your sleeve's wrist to its halfway fold. Cut an inch up and down the fold to make a T-shape and then if you need to, unpick the stitching along the arm sleeve seam in that region so it's an elongate H shape across the wrist forming two flaps. Now sew a casing to each flap and lay the palm side casing over the sleeve side casing, pulling the sleeve out naturally flat and pin the slits along the fold and along the unpicked seam, catching the ends of the casings into the pinning. So. Now you can pull the glove gently off your hand while you're wearing the suit and slip your hand out through the hole. 